Let's bring in Mustafa Borgatti. He's the Secretary General of the Palestinian National Initiative. He joins us live from Ramallah in the occupied West Bank. Very good to have you here on the program, Mustafa. These attacks on UNRWA schools, we've been counting five of them over the last couple of days. What do you think Israel's strategy is here? Israel has two specific strategies by conducting these attacks. First of all, 80% of all UNRWA schools have already been bombarded. The main UNRWA centers have also been destroyed. Israel is trying to achieve a situation where it makes life in Gaza impossible. Don't forget that these are not just schools. They are shelters of people who have been displaced by the Israeli army bombardment and told to go to these areas, uh, claiming that these areas are safe. And now Israel is attacking these areas. So one, in my opinion, main goal is to make this the, the possibility of living in Gaza impossible, because this has been the always the main goal of the Israeli attack, which is ethnic cleansing of all the population of Gaza. But in, other, in, addition, in addition to that, Israel is destroying uh, or trying to destroy any health or educational facilities. Their attack on education structures have been remarkable. You are talking about the destruction, complete destruction, erasing to the ground all universities in Gaza. In addition, as I said, to more than probably 80 or 90 percent of schools, clearly Israel wants to create a generation that is incapable of receiving proper education. And uh, at the same time, they are attacking hospitals. There is no hospital in Gaza that was not attacked up till now. 34 out of 36 hospitals are totally unfunctional now because of Israeli attacks. So this is a, a process of destroying all sources of human life. And clearly, it is affecting a whole generation, because you are talking about uh, all Palestinian students in Gaza, whether they are school, school, school boys and girls or uh, university students, are deprived from any possibility of access to any form of education for almost a year. That is very dangerous and very, will have very bad impact in the long run. But this has all happened within the ranks of not only massacres, but a process of genocide that is Israel is practicing in front of the whole world. I'm so shocked that the United Nations cannot do anything about destruction of its own facilities, about the fact that Israel killed more than 145 of, of UN, UN workers up till now. Uh, and we are so shocked about the world, which cannot stop this terrible atrocity and hold Israel responsible for its violations of all international laws. Mr. Bargote, let me just be very clear here on a point that you just made. Um, you were talking about how Israel designates some areas as safe, people go there, and then Israel bombs these places. Do you actually think, I mean, are you saying that Israel intentionally tells people to go to so-called safe areas to then bomb them? in these areas? Absolutely. They do that and without even warning. They tell people go to Mawasi and people move to Mawasi from Rafah and before that they moved from the north to the south. And then they bombard Mawasi without any warning. While uh, 80,000 80, people were clustered in that little uh, space called Mawasi in Khan Yunis, because they were forced out of Rafah, and uh, before that they were forced out of the north. And then that area, which had 80,000 people, was bombarded heavily by F-16 jet fighters, by drones. No less than 13 huge rockets and bombs were thrown on the population. And that, of course, led to a huge massacre, where almost 100 people were killed and more than 400 injured. That's one case. And now we keep seeing different similar other cases, like the one we are describing now in a school. So the question is, where is the safe place in that little place called Gaza, which is only 140 square miles, and uh, where uh, most people have been displaced already more than six times? And that area, which is only 140 square miles, was bombarded up till this moment with more than 80,000 
80,000 tons of explosives. That is more than double the explosive power of Hiroshima and Nagasaki nuclear bombs that were thrown on the Second World War, in the Second World War. That is 36 kilograms of explosives for each man, woman, and child in Gaza. How can anybody tolerate that? So let me just stay on this point, because I, I want to make sure that we really understand the allegation here. You're saying that Israel knows that they're sending people to falsely called safe places because they think it's going to be easier to bomb them in this place, sort of gathering people in one place and then sending these heavy bombs. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely, 100 percent. Look what they have done in the north first and in Gaza City. They tried everything they could to push people out of Gaza and the north, claiming that they can be safe in the central and southern areas. Then they attacked the central area and Khan Yunus and told people to go to Rafah, where they concentrated more than 1.4 million people in a very little space. And then they started bombarding Rafah and told people go to Mawasi. Mawasi cannot take all these people, but they first pushed them there. And when they concentrated in such a huge manner, they attacked Mawasi. So yes, Israel is purposefully committing genocide, purposefully killing people, purposefully killing children. We, we don't know exactly how many people were killed so far. Uh, the documented uh, number is maybe 48,000 people. But actually, many, many researchers now are saying that the number of Palestinians killed could exceed maybe 100,000. And uh, because there are so many people missing, so many people, so many places destroyed, thousands of people under the rubble that nobody can reach them. And add to that, more than 100,000 people who have been injured. And add to that, 1.6 million people who are already sick because of lack of water, lack of food, because of starvation, because of lack of proper facilities of life. And they are suffering from different diseases. And now we start to see epidemics in Gaza, like hepatitis, which has already affected more than 76,000 people. So what is this? It's a combination of war, uh, of, of, of war crimes by bombarding people, by causing disease for people, by starving people. I don't know of any other example in modern history of such a level of genocide and such a level of war crime. I don't know even if, if history have seen anything like that ever before. So, so the, the, the question is why the world is not starting immediately a campaign of imposing sanctions on Israel? That is the question. So if you have this allegation in mind that you're saying that Israel is purposely bombing, killing people, sending people to a specific place to kill them, how can you conduct any kind of ceasefire talks knowing that this is going on? Uh, well, uh, the resistance is conducting ceasefire talks because they want to save as many people as possible. And also because they don't want to allow Israel to claim that it is the Palestinian side that is preventing ceasefire. It is to show the world that the reality is that Israel is the one that doesn't want ceasefire and wants to continue this terrible genocide. And in other words, to show the world that what Israel is doing now in Gaza and partially in the West Bank is nothing but continuation of their settler colonial project, which was initiated at the end of the 19th century and reached a peak in 1948 committing the Nakba, the, 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 the huge Holocaust against Palestinian population. And now they want to continue because their goal, which is not hidden, by the way, th these, this is what Israeli ministers say, like Smotrich and Bingvir, they say they want to erase to the completely and eradicate any Palestinian people on the land of historic Palestine. Mr. Bargote, very good to have you here on the program. And thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. Thank you so much.